gives you a shield and a helmet. You like helmets, right? Power Rangers? Eh? Eh? <laughs> you know That's who the it. first yeah. Power Ranger is? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I think one of the exact phrases is God wants you to gird your loins. Mm-hmm. Which is... We- also, he created a bunch of stuff that goes right for your dick, apparently. So, <laughs> worship him and gird your loins against his dick attacking creations <laughs> is a weird message. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we want to know what it's like to be essential. I'm your host, No Illusions, <laughs> and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. How, Noah? Oh, God. How, <laughs> how you doing? I think we're all asking that question. I'm, yes, yeah, right. Finish it They're going to say some racist, anti-Native American stuff just to explain to everybody ahead of time what that meant. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. All right. So sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. <laughs> are, are you? <laughs> yeah. Are you? I'm great. I feel like you're too shabby for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. You're, are you not mm-hmm. feeling too shabby? Nah, trust me. I'll, there'll be a day where I'm too shabby. And you'll know. We've all been you'll waiting. Right. Yeah. One to ten shabbiness. Where, where are you at? Two. Two. Oh, come on. Bullshit. You haven't had to go out in like nine days. Come on. You're at least at a nine and a half on the shabbiness scale. <laughs> Shit. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. From yeah. the oh, external you shabbiness. Pretty, that, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So you say you've never been at a two. When were you at a two? <laughs> you weren't at a two at your fucking wedding. <laughs> I really wasn't. <laughs> All right. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Ambushed. It's the story of a Native American becoming a completed Jew. <laughs> just just American. A completed Native American Christian. Yeah. <laughs> and then he takes up the <laughs> completed red man's burden and helps an evil white guy atheist. It's wildly offensive, the whole thing. It's and brutal. I don't know. It's very short. I hated every minute of it. Yeah, I can't <laughs> tell exactly when this was made because IMDB has literally never heard of it. Like, I looked up the various actors, many of whom I could find on IMDb, and still IMDb has never heard of this. But yeah, it was, it was clearly in a far less woke day than the, than the 90s or 80s when we grew up. Wow. (laughs) And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love PBS, but you think Dora the Explorer uses way too light a hand when it comes to the wages of sin, <laughs> you will love this movie. It's a uh, Sesame Street epistemology. Oh, nice, nice. There you go. Except for <laughs> the opposite. Yeah. So here's what fucked me up about it. I normally know very little about these things as we're going into them. So all I knew is that we were dealing with a Western movie starts. It's got the most generic possible Western music. It's got the most generic possible Western you know, visuals and everything. And about four or five minutes in puppets show up. There have been <laughs> human beings up to this point. Everyone's been a human being. And then there's puppets and they surprised me. You it, I got to say, you really got to know going in that puppets are about to pop out of that stagecoach or it'll freak you right the <laughs> fuck out. You got to cold open with puppets if you're going to make a puppet saying. movie. You, you can't do. You got to call them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. At least make the horses puppets at the beginning or something. <laughs> something. <laughs> that would be yeah. fun. Give me some indication that there are puppets coming. Don't surprise me post credits with puppets. And these puppets particularly, so uh, just for clarity, this is not the first Dudley Dumpling movie. It's just the first one we watched. So this movie's really hoping you're up on your Dudley Dumpling lore when it surprises you with fucking puppets. (laughs) This is also the last one we watched, just uh, putting that on record. Oh, Oh, incorrect. I don't know about that. (laughs) Ah, Two, literally two votes. Yeah, right. (laughs) Um, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Best worst puppets for no fucking reason. <laughs> right? Uh, yep. And and except for one guy in the movie, it, it never acknowledges the fact that they, <laughs> they have a movie that just happens to have three puppets in it. <laughs> and it's insane. And the one time it does get acknowledged, the one guy is like, all right, <laughs> 
I'm sorry if I'm way off base here, but um, are you guys fucking puppets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they ignore it like he like it was like a social con like he asked about a goiter and like they just go right past it. It's insane. It's like watching Shawshank Redemption, but Morgan Freeman was a puppet the whole time, and otherwise it's exactly the same. Exactly. Exactly. Don't have a fucking acid flashback. It was ridiculous. Yeah, there's some Dudley Dumpling deep lore about a world inhabited by puppets that I want to catch up on. <laughs> Well, okay, but here's the fucked up thing. Not only are these guys puppets for no reason, but the puppets serve no real purpose in the story either. Uh -uh. Right? Nope. Everything about them is superfluous. No, I think they just had some actors that were like, mm, I don't know. I'll talk. <laughs> but you probably shouldn't show me on camera. You know. All right. So I was going to go with best worst gunfight. Ooh, yes. So like, I know that gunfights have gotten better over the years, but man, holy shit. I didn't, I forgot that this is where they started, right? The whole, like <laughs> everybody's hiding behind their own rock, pecu, pecu, pecuing. And occasionally there's a bazing. That's the whole fucking thing. And this is like a bad version of that. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. Makes you really appreciate the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. <laughs> There's one great moment in, in a gunfight sequence where <laughs> they do one of those PQ moments, and one of the extras clearly got like blasted right in the eye with some shrapnel. Yes. And he, he, <laughs> yes, the, the fucking the blacksmith guy. Yeah. He yep. frantically grabbed his eye. And ow, stay with it ow. for a while. Time yeah. out, time out, and then he's never in the rest of the movie. No, nope. they just cut away after five minutes of him being like, "Time out, it hurts a lot." So you should cut away. <laughs> we all you get should, around. Still watching this? Join in hands and pray for him and shit. Yeah, yeah. See, now I was gonna go with best worst Nazi dog. <laughs> <laughs> so Dudley Dumpling and Gramps have a dog named Vein Hofmorfen. Who they will just <laughs> occasionally reference. Wait, is that it's, the name of the dog? It's Philemon. It's something super it's, German. Yeah, I it was Philemon. It's, it's, Philemon. it's, it's Philemon, Philemon, but he's, he's, he pronounces it really weird. He goes Philemon or whatever every time he says it. But, yeah. Come Philemon, right? So it sounds like, oh, Schaffindel von Scheidelwagen. It's very, <laughs> it's a very weird, like if this was an episode of Hunters, it would be foreshadowing that Gramps was a Nazi. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and by the way, this dog, this puppet dog will never do anything. No. I mean, it won't could nothing except for Gramps occasionally turning to him and being like, yes, you are a pure breed, Philemon. <laughs> a pure breed indeed. <laughs> Finish your sarsaparilla, Dali. Finish your sarsaparilla. So just so the everyone. The Nazi shepherd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just so everybody knows if you're following along my subtext for this movie is that Gramps is a Nazi who escaped down to Venezuela and now time travels to try to save the Fuhrer so I haven't seen the first Dudley Dumpling but that's that's what I'm See, we, I was close I hmm. was I just had him like traveling to, through time to like hide from <laughs> Nazi hunting time traveling bandits right like right Love like it. this yeah <laughs> yes if you could go back in time and save one person from dying would it be Hitler Hitler it would be Hitler <laughs> yeah we're Nazi puppets <laughs> <laughs> all right well there's some pretty crazy shit on the other side of this break so we're going to give you a chance to prepare yourself and then we'll be back for all the strained puppeteering of ambushed guys guys get in here Eli, if you show us the Zapruder tape one more time. No, 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 no. It's not that. Check it out. I call it the Toothinator 9000. Yeah, that seems dangerous. Is that a bandsaw? Yes and yes. I'm telling you guys, this is going to be the ultimate way to maintain good dental care. Eli, the best way to maintain good dental health is good habits. That means brushing for two minutes twice a day and flossing regularly, no matter what brand you use. Ugh, but that's so much stuff. Okay, but check out Quip. Quip makes that simple, starting with an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity toothpaste. Plus, Quip delivers fresh brush heads, floss, and toothpaste refills to your door every three months with free shipping, so your routine is always right. Wow, that sounds way easier than the Toothinator 9000. Well, and if you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you'll get your first refill free. 
That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Quip, the good habits company. Okay, okay, all right. So, so much for the Toothinator 9000. Okay, but why a bandsaw? Why does his head go back into the left? I am not having this fight again. All right, everybody. Welcome to the first ever writer's meeting for Ambushed. So, uh, Gramps and Dudley are headed to the Old West for this adventure. Ooh, what are you guys thinking? Um, oh, how about a bank robbery? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that gets foiled by the Lone Ranger. Ooh. Oh, nice. Love it. Love it. And a lengthy lecture on the metaphor of the armor of God. Right? Right? Sure, sure. Yeah, uh-huh. I, mean, I guess so. As part of the ooh, ooh, adventure. Uh, maybe they could meet an Indian chief. Uh, and participate in a horse chase. Yes, both of which end in a protracted lecture on the metaphor of the armor of God. S- Seriously, Phil? Look, look, this is a Christian kids show. I don't want to be lumped in with those heathens over at fucking Sesame Street. Okay, but like it could still be fun, right? Yeah, like, come on, man, it's still a kids show. Fine, fine, uh... 22 minutes of sarsaparilla conversation, then the armor of God, Jesus stuff. Sounds good. This is real. Sarsaparilla. A lot of sarsaparilla talk. So much sarsaparilla talk. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're not even going to get through the production logos before I have questions. (laughs) What questions did you have? Mr. Button family video. (laughs) Yep. Zero seconds before they accidentally made a sexual innuendo they don't understand. Yes, right, right. The fucking logo comes up and I just wrote Mr. Button fucks. (laughs) Wait, what did I miss? What, how is, what was the sexual innuendo in Mr. Button? You missed the clitoris, Heath. You missed the clitoris. (laughs) Sorry, the what? (laughs) Mr. You, it's, okay. We're going to anthropomorphize the clitoris as a guy named Mr. Button. That's fine. Okay, I mean, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't do it. They did it. They're the ones who created <laughs> Mr. Button Productions. I think you did it. <laughs> All right. So uh, we get Mr. Button. He fucks with. Then we get Harvest Production. Harvest Productions, by the way, very much does not fuck and doesn't approve of it when you do it <laughs> either. Oh, they have an entire hymn for their intro. <laughs> oh, my God. It goes on for so long. And the music is just it's so generically western mm-hmm. well stolen magnificent seven oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, literally yeah. stole like i actually made a joke about this uh during the uh, we did crawl as the bonus episode that's coming out soon but in this movie they literally almost note for note stole the magnificent seven theme yeah oh yeah they're like bah, 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 bah. they do it for a while and then they're like okay now we just go out of it and it's now we're allowed <laughs> Yep. Apparently, and apparently this flew enough under the radar that nobody noticed. Was this made before that, maybe? Did, did Magnificent <laughs> Seven steal it from this? Oh, I'm, God, I, I have no idea so. when this was made, because I can find made? no reference to this on the internet anywhere. We are the only evidence that this movie exists. <laughs> 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 All right, so we get, like, a, a, a solid three and a half minutes of credits, including this one I love. Uh, with members and friends of West High Baptist Church and Mexican Gospel Mission. That's in the credits there. Uh, I was a big fan of Wallace Big Willie Tucker, yes, who is credited he was in, in the this film. movie. <laughs> also, by the way, Ron Nix is in this. He Almost nobody would recognize the name. He, he, he plays the lone stranger. I shit you not, the lone stranger <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> The Magnificent 7.1. Yeah, exactly. Lone Stranger. Yeah, so he is like a a legendary stuntman. And he was, I don't know, like he he really dialed it in for this little bit. But he (laughs) he does a a ton of Western and horse stunts and shit like that. And has a non-speaking role in this one. And again, like even on his IMDb page, there is no reference to these fucking puppets anywhere. Yeah. It was his dying wish to have this removed from his IMDb. <laughs> I think he's still alive, but yes, it will be his dying wish. <laughs> it would have been funny if he was a puppet too. It wouldn't have changed much. <laughs> but he never talked. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they're so bad at puppeting. His mouth would have been moving with no lines. It yeah. Been yeah. 
We also have a bunch of shots of a cowboy gearing up to these credits. Yeah. Uh, and I learned from this movie that S&M is just a cowboy who kept going. Right. It's like, all right, let's clip a clip and saddle a belt and tie this. And I was just like, oh, OK. So a guy just had like three extra pieces of leather and he was like, this is a sex thing now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we see a lot. I, I noticed I, I'm guessing buckle salesmen just crushed it in the old West. Yeah, they it's really did. Buckles everywhere. <laughs> Maybe. Now, now it's their work in an SNM situation. They're making money. I don't know. I guess yeah. everything was buckled to everything in that. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So the, the cowboy gears up, they get on a stagecoach. We watch this stagecoach for, I don't know, most of our adult lives. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then the, the stagecoach pulls up. This guy goes to you know take the mail in or whatever. And they zoom in on this stagecoach. We've been watching it for about four minutes now. And three goddamn puppets pop up out of the stagecoach and freak me right the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> I love this so much. Heath and Noah's notes are just surprise and terror at these puppets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because, okay, so let's be clear. These are some rough looking puppets. Yeah. Right. Like, as I understand it, Jim Henson made the original go at Kermit by like tearing up his mom's old jacket in the closet. They were not able to hit that level. No, no. They were waiting outside by Jim Henson's dumpster and they were like, perfectly good jacket remains. We've got puppets. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it took me a minute to recover from the fucking puppets. But these are the puppets. There's Dudley Dumpling. There's Gramps. And there's the dog Philemon or as Philemon. Philemon. Philemon Kampf or whatever his name. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so they have time traveled to the Old West town of Armor. This has all happened to me in eight seconds. It's going to take a long time to recover <laughs> from all of that. Okay. They time tra I didn't get that part. When who we're in we're in puppet universe to start and then they have a time machine and they go here? That's what Well, Heath, I don't want to spoil when we watch In Search of Dudley Dumpling, which is the first movie in the Dudley Dumpling saga, which we skipped over, but yeah, they're time traveling <laughs> Christian puppets. Okay. Gear up. So okay, with the, what? here's what happened to me is when the puppets showed up. I read the goddamn description on the YouTube thing, and that's what it said, is that they time-traveled <laughs> to the Old West. So, yeah, so the puppets head to this hotel. Everyone seems cool with that, <laughs> right? They're in the city of Armor, and they go to the hotel Armor. I expected the front desk clerk to be named Armor. Second thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're all Armor around here, aren't we, Armor? Yeah. Yeah. And but then a family of you know human beings goes into the hotel, and they check in, and I wanted them to be like, "Hey, innkeeper, cool. We just like a room." Um, also, you know, you got like three puppets, right? That are just <laughs> like standing out on one of your balconies, like puppets, like not people. <laughs> puppets, they talk. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so they check into their hotel. Also, this is where they meet the fucking eight-year-old bellhop peewee who they want to mm -hmm. befriend in a very creepy sequence right gramps turns to fucking dudley and he goes like yeah that uh that eight-year-old huh he seemed like he'd be a little nice to be friends with huh <laughs> and dudley's like i don't know and he's like wasn't talking about you talking about <laughs> Grandpa. <laughs> also this is where they gave the puppets legs and oh, God. man, are these hell creations. They are a thousand feet long and they pour out of the TV screen and wrap around your neck. It's fucking <laughs> insane. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is, OK, yeah, they're like basically like Muppets, except that occasionally we see their legs and that makes it so fucking creepy. <laughs> yeah. Eli's notes just devolve into terror as we get through this each time <laughs> puppet legs pop up. It gets worse and worse. Yeah. The puppet legs get worse and worse. They turn into spiders' legs, and they oh, have like they become goddamn fears. primeval before it's all over. Oh, yeah, it's fucking terrifying. All right, so oh, and it's time to introduce the main theme of this movie, which is sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla. <laughs> That's a theme. definitely the protagonist of this movie. That's a theme in the movie. Yeah, it's mostly about sarsaparilla, actually. 
the bellhop kid says, can I get you guys a sarsaparilla? And Graham says, I'll take a diet sarsaparilla. And I think that's a joke. <laughs> okay. So right after that, there's a gunshot, which is going to spur forward the plot. But I really wanted Grandpa to fall forward and for someone to be standing behind him like, nobody orders diet sarsaparilla in my <laughs> town. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right so yeah so, no so, so there's a gunshot they all run <laughs> to the pepper town all right so they hear a gunshot though they all run to the window and it turns out that there's a bad guy robbing the bank well he's, he's, he's trying for it anyway <laughs> luckily though a white hat shows up just in time now, this is Ron Nix, legendary uh, stuntman, and I say that because there's no way you would guess he was legendary based on this weak-ass horse-to-horse tackle that it's he does. The best. <laughs> it's the, they slow dance on horses for a second, and then they both roll onto the ground. Oh, it's so bad. Yeah. Yeah, I have to feel like either the other guy wasn't a stuntman or Ron Nix is like, all right, but I'm not getting fucking hurt for you guys, right? It was one <laughs> or the other. <laughs> But yeah, he tackles the bad guy, knocks him unconscious, and then rides out of town because he's the lone stranger, right? Question. If you are doing bad guy stuff in the Old West, why don't you dress up in white hat and white cowboy stuff? Right? Ooh. Yeah, nobody would ever see you coming. That seems like it, they just completely, they've decided on that. Probably just cause It'd be such a bitch to keep it clean. Yeah, that's what it is. They know the villains wouldn't keep it clean. Everyone yeah. starts out in white, and then eventually <laughs> when you get dirty enough, you have to become a villain. Huh. Yep, that's got to be it. All right. Old West rules. So, and then, all right, so now everybody gathers around the unconscious bank robber. Pee-wee is sure worried about him, the the, the little bellhop kid. I I, like, I had to, I, I got it in my nose. I'm like, I'm having... A lot of trouble following the first seven minutes of this children's <laughs> puppet show. Yeah, he he like lies down by the guy's side and he's like, Don't die, Mr. Taggart. And some rando is like, he just hit the ground kind of hard. And Pee Wee's like, Yeah, man, that kills people. <laughs> <laughs> Thus my worry. Yeah. <laughs> I was confused that he was he's I thought he was a a good guy because you know, a kid is like, Dad, don't die. But he's he's a bad guy. But I was thinking, like, see, this is why this is why you don't wear face bandanas for fun if you're not a bad guy. That was just right. his fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, this is pretty. It, it was it took a second to, for us to all figure this out. But, yes, this was the bank robber. His daughter is right there and runs up and says, oh, dad, bank robber, dad, I hope you're going to be OK. And. The bellhop kid is unrelated, but just worried about Mr. Taggart, the friendly neighborhood bank robber. He's just also in the movie. He's like, I'm yeah. also here. Right. Yeah, basically. Yeah. All right. So now we head over to the jailhouse and meet the sheriff. We meet him as the girl that had come in to like, you know, cry over her father's unconscious body shows up to like give the sheriff uh, a, a pie. Yep. She says, I brought you a surprise. I really wanted her to pull out a six shooter, blast him in the face. <laughs> Come on, daddy. God, we're getting out, daddy. We're, we're hitting the road till the heat dies down. I, I honestly felt like, you know, like she was seducing the sheriff on behalf of mom. She's like, you know what? He's going to go away for a while on this bank robbery thing. You're single. Yeah. Um, Sex thing was super weird before cell phones. Let's just admit that right now. <laughs> but yeah, so the sheriff's like, well, thanks for the pie and everything. You can give uh, a slice to your dad if you want. So she goes up to her dad and she wants to give him a slice of pie and a Bible. <laughs> yeah. And some America. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have a pie, Bible, America. Hey, have you noticed reasons. we have puppets in town? Did you <laughs> see puppets? Why is no one freaking Nobody's out about this? Nobody's talking about this. <laughs> it's fucking puppets. Hanging out, but yeah, we all have some version of, is there a file in this pie? Then go fuck yourself. Yeah, is there notes. a tiny little rock hammer in this Bible? Then go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The dad is like, daughter, I don't need no pie. I need to be free. And she's like, Jesus can set you free. And he's like, that's not what I, I fucking, Come you know on, what I fucking, do that. God cool. damn it. No, Jesus can set me free? No, that's great. Cool. Uh, Jesus, 
<laughs> yeah, right. Jesus. <laughs> Send him Fuck in on you. your way out. <laughs> stupid, stupid little girl. Idiot. I'm an atheist. Morality's relative. Read a book. <laughs> Not the Bible. All right. So meanwhile, the puppets are having the root beer at the restaurant. <laughs> the fucking the, Gramp says to, to Dudley, he goes, how's your sarsaparilla? Dudley then critiques the fucking root beer like he was a judge on Chopped. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bubblier than I like it. I got to say, honestly, it doesn't have the nice, same smooth flavor of a Dr. Pepper. But... Yeah, the puppet prefers Dr. Pepper. Yep. You hear that, Heath? You and a puppet without a tongue both love Dr. <laughs> Dr. Pepper. <laughs> he has a tongue? What are you talking about? <laughs> Dr. Pepper is better. Dr. Pepper's delightful. I don't know what... This keeps coming up recently. Yeah, I don't know I have, how. I have a Dr. Pepper sitting right next to me at this very it's moment. It's really good. So. All right, so Gramps observes as they're drinking their sarsaparilla that the town of armor needs God's armor. Get it? And little Dudley has a weird fucking guess as to what that is, by the way. He's like, oh, it needs God's armor. And Dudley goes, you mean law and order? And Gramps is like, nope, I meant... A metaphor. You were really quick with a 1980s Reagan catchphrase. Can I throw that out there, Dudley? <laughs> a, little, a little too fast. And Gramps is like, uh, ding, ding. he's like, hey, what was, uh, the fuck was Pee Wee's motivation in the last scene? He's not even related to that guy. Dudley's like, I, I don't fucking know, man. I guess he was in the movie too, right? Yep. And then Gramps makes Pee Wee finish his sarsaparilla. <laughs> and I only point this out one because the puppeteer cannot make this no. puppet drink his sarsaparilla <laughs> but like the scene grinds to a halt he's like finish your sarsaparilla and we'll head upstairs and Dudley's like I was wondering and he's like finish your fucking sarsaparilla <laughs> <laughs> and then we cut to Gramps and Dudley upstairs in the bedroom doing a little bible reading foreplay yeah, you thought Bert and Ernie were progressive. These guys got the love that dare not speak its name between a grandfather and grandchild. So, you know, edgy. I don't think that's progressive. Are you giving that as an example of, like, highly progressive? Yes. Okay, that's not comfortable. <laughs> the direction of progress is confusing based on what Eli just said. <laughs> All right, and so Gramps is reading the Bible. He's reading that fucking bit out of Philippians about the armor of God because Christians are so damn confident that that's the one that's going to get kids to dig their bullshit. What? There's armor and a sword I want to play. Right? Yeah, I'm. we've watched like 16 movies now that invoke this armor of God thing. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah, no, but again, it's because they're like, it's like, yeah, armor, kids, and God gives you a shield and a helmet. You like helmets, right? Power Rangers, eh? Eh? <laughs> you know That's who it. the first yeah. Power Ranger is? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I think one of the exact phrases is God wants you to gird your loins, mm -hmm. which is weird. Also, he created a bunch of stuff that goes right for your dick, apparently. So <laughs> worship him and gird your loins against his dick attacking creations <laughs> is a weird message to focus on. If I had a nickel uh, from Ephesians. Yeah, right. And then he falls asleep in the most realistic reaction to a Bible we've ever had on God Awful yes. Movies. Right. Grimm's falls asleep because this is fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> And the kid, the kid goes, okay, got it. God's armor. Can we not just buy some of that? I want to buy some of that. And Gramps is like, no, we don't buy it. We live it and, and pay 10% of our income. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we both, but it's both. It's both. All right. And so, so Gramps falls asleep and they need this puppet. But they don't need, for whatever reason, they decide that they need this puppet to sip a drink from a bottle with a straw here. And it is so painful to watch them try to make this. It's like right, the movie that we did with the paralyzed cop. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? It's like yeah. that again. Yeah. They're so fucking terrible with puppets to the extent that I actually watched this and thought to myself for the first time, huh? I guess puppets must be harder than I thought. <laughs> like that must be, must be more to puppets than old e -Boz was giving them credit for. What's funny is that you learned that during the same scene that this puppeteer learned that. <laughs> yeah, I sure the fuck did, yeah. 
But at some point, the puppeteer was like, I can do snoring really good. I'm good at yeah. that as a noise anyway. <laughs> so with puppet snores for a long time. Aggressive snoring just to mm. show off that, that yeah. trick. He nailed it. Breathes like a pug. It's rough. <laughs> How dare you? Can you get a CPAP machine for a pug just oh, for their daily, little, like, not tiny sleeping little, moments? Yeah. All I mean, the time? I'm, I'm going to find out. And I'm sure, I'm sure your medical coverage for Madge covers a CPAP machine with oh, tiny no, little adorable pugs. No CPAP. question. Yeah. Idris Elba, Tom Hanks, and Madge all got the test for the coronavirus first. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to pause for a quick break in the hopes that it'll give these assholes some time to figure out how to move the arms and shit. But we'll be back in a flash with even more Ambushed. Thanks for letting me be part of the movie, Kyle. No problem, man. No problem. Uh, so here's your puppet. Uh, wait, puppet? I'm an act. I'm not a. I'm not a puppeteer. So I don't, I don't think. Who cares, Steve? Neither am I. How hard could it be? Just make the puppet do what it says in the script. Uh, okay, but all right, people, about, like, we're ready to uh, roll. We're ready to right, roll. Let's sure, do this. Go. Take one. Go. Yeah, I guess. And action. All right, then, Dudley, finish your sarsaparilla. Okay, Gramps. Sorry, I. How do I move the arm? I get Okay, it. we're still I, rolling. Not, we are still uh, rolling. I, it's on okay. the stick. It's on the stick. Just no, no use the I, stick. I know. I know it's on the stick, but like, waste the tape I get, here, people. It, we are wasting tape. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm. Uh, cut. Cut. Mm. Sorry, it's Steve, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, I'm Steve. Yep. Uh, what are you doing, Steve? What are you doing here? Oh, I, uh, well, I was just saying before, I, I couldn't figure out how to make the puppet drink. You know what I mean? So, 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 so you lowered I, the puppet onto the bottle? Uh, onto the, onto the bottle. Yeah. Yep. Why? Uh, I was thinking, well, again, I couldn't make him drink with the mouth. I was thinking maybe he, uh, butt chugs it. He what? He butt chugs it. Oh, you guys! Not, it's where you put a bottle up your butt, and then no, no, no. We we got to, it. To we drink. We get it because it's in. Yeah, it's in why, your ass at that point. I tell you. I tell you what. Why don't we just do this take and have the puppet drink it regular? Okay. Just okay. Right, not butt. Okay. There's nothing goes up the puppet's butt nothing, for this take. Say, nothing at all. None. Zero percent for for this take though. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but but I told you I don't know how to do. You know that, what? You'll figure it drink. out. And okay, action. All right there, Dudley. Finish your sarsaparilla. Um, I got an even better idea, Gramps. Let me show you how to turn an apple into a pipe. Cut. Seriously, dude? What? Let's take ten. It's educational. You would need to know how to do that, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to open up this time around on the blacksmith, who also happens to be Pee Wee's dad. Who also happens to be the guy, I believe, who got eyeballed by the shrapnel earlier. Yep. Oh, was that, was that him? I think so, yeah. yeah. This is Mr. Bumpers, by the way. <laughs> Mr. Bumpers. <laughs> because, you could have gave him, like, he's not a puppet, right? <laughs> Mr. Bump, because he bumps metal. Black <laughs> they were like, bump, metal, bump, Mr. Bumpers. Also, 100%. This actor was very much like, fuck you, I'm wearing my t-shirt and a Civil War hat. That's old-timey enough. <laughs> <laughs> so the bank robber's daughter shows up. This is Amanda. She shows up and she's like, hi, Mr. Blacksmith. I sure am bummed about my daddy being in jail. And the blacksmith is just like, well, you know, your dad is a no-good, low-down, cheating, whoring, syphilitic piece of festering possum shit. The little daughter's like, it's my dad. And she's like, right, right. <laughs> Right. Right. Okay. I'm a I'm a child, so if you could not <laughs> Does he not tell her to kill herself here? Not that I heard. I didn't, what version I didn't did you that. watch? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was like, Well, your dad's fucking evil atheist. You should like dip your face in that big trough of water out there till you die. And she's like, Oh, I'll try that later, I guess. Thanks. He does Thanks, tell Mr. her, Bumpers. like, you might as well dunk your head into the trough Wait, of water if you're trying, out there. Yeah, he says, if you're trying to turn your dad into a Christian, you might as well just, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. Which, which Heath interpreted as, go drown yourself in my front yard. <laughs> How is that different? <laughs> 
I think I think he was considering a dip, not a drowning. Well, I think he was saying it was a task one would not succeed at, not a not a mm. suggestion. Mm. You know what? Agree to disagree. <laughs> what other note on blacksmithing, by the way? Do you not have to heat metal? <laughs> for I'm sh- hammering it to matter. He's hammering metal. He's just like, I'm banging it, bumping the metal with metal. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's just trying to get a good tune out of it. I don't know. (laughs) So, yeah. And so apparently uh, Amanda is friends with his son, Pee Wee. So she's like, hey, can I go wake up Pee Wee? And he's like, yeah, sure. Why not? I obviously don't know how to do this shit. (laughs) I haven't even needed this up. So uh, get me the fuck off camera. And then he walks off camera for the next eight minutes. Yep. All right. So the daughter goes to find Pee Wee. And he's like, I don't want to hang out with you. And she's like, really? Because I heard that the lone stranger was was nearby. Totally different angel. It's it's okay. There's no. (laughs) And he's like, lone stranger. I'm fucking in. I'm in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's all about it. We also get another shot of the puppet legs here. They like drag them along the ground as though the puppets are walking again. It's my hell. (laughs) It's my hell. <laughs> it's the opposite of ASMR. Oh if there's an opposite of ASMR, it's these puppet legs. <laughs> I have so many plans in the works now with showing up with puppet legs. Oh in yeah, the night. Eli, you have no idea. <laughs> now you have an idea, but it's it's worse than you. Think. Whatever you're thinking, it's going to be more than that. You can't even begin to imagine how many puppet <laughs> legs are in your future. All right, so they head out to meet the lone stranger. They come across the puppets. The puppets would also like to meet the lone stranger. So they're they're on their way to do that, and Gramps is telling them all about God's armor, right? Again. Again. <laughs> I couldn't tell it was Gramps here. Yeah. I was just like, okay, who's talking? I wanted one of them to be like, hey, whoever's doing voiceovers, fucking cut it out. Oh, it's Gramps. <laughs> it, you're, you're a puppet, man. Can we just dwell on this one more time? <laughs> Don't do voiceovers. Also, you're made of fabric, so that's weird. <laughs> And he's going like the the shit he's saying is so insane, right? He's like, when we meet our enemy, the devil, he has to put that, he has to (laughs) specify, you know, just in case you were in danger of taking this puppet seriously. Yeah, not enough children's entertainment names their enemies. (laughs) (laughs) Want Dora to start doing that, right? (laughs) Yeah. Talking about her enemies in the cartel. Now, if you see this man, you tell me and I'll kill him. (laughs) What's that? Where is he? Over there? Can you find my machete? (laughs) (laughs) So the daughter is like talking to Gramps and she's like, wait a minute. Do you, we we have armor if we're Christians. You mean like being a warrior? And Gramps is like, yep, being a Christian is pretty badass. He tells him all about the helmet of salvation and the... Fucking Breast shield of righteousness. Yeah. Uh, was really hoping we'd get to hear about the cod piece of abstinence, but we don't. We do not. <laughs> totally teased us on that girding our loins thing. Oh, and by the way, while he's doing this, they just keep cycling through the same three shots in the most amazing ways. Like, far away, close up, horse feet. Far away, close up, horse feet. Far away, close up, horse feet. The entire scene. <laughs> it's so good. Now, Noah, so far, I think we can all agree, this movie's pretty boring but you know what it's missing what's that vicious racism? vicious racism yeah. that's correct Ethan, right <laughs> yeah we could use yeah, it a becomes little... a lot less boring now it's super exciting we're about to get <laughs> racism <laughs> oh all right so they come across the lone stranger and he's with their words not mine an indian warrior it's okay, guys. I'm sure that'll be tasteful. Yeah. He actually says, it looks like an Indian brave, the little kid. And no, it doesn't. It no. does not. <laughs> it, nope. That's false. It looks like an Italian guy with a feather in his hat. Yeah. That's yep. what it looks like. Yeah. That is what it looks it like. It looks like a tan dude from Brooklyn is what it looks like. Yeah. And then, okay, so the Lone Stranger goes one way, and then the kids... Run away from the Native American because he's a Native American, right? Yeah, that but... is exactly what fucking happened. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god, he's looking at us. He's looking at us. They're like, don't make eye contact with the savage. Fuck! Fuck! All right, go, go, go. <laughs> they react to the Indian brave the way missionaries reacted to me in Temple Square in Salt Lake City. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's coming this direction. It's a Jewish Where, atheist. Oh, Jewish god. atheist. <laughs> Stand still. Missionaries only see motion. (laughs) (laughs) 
So, so but the but the uh, Native American guy catches up with him, and they have this really awkward like, well, we were running from who was running from nobody was running. From Hello, you. it's not because you're an Indian American, a native. You're nope. not. You're very clearly not. Actually, you're probably like Italian. But to the Indian chief's credit, he goes like, "Hey, are these three fucking puppets?" And everyone's like, "Hey, I wanted Heath to pop up and be like, thank you.' Okay, so you saw it. You see that they're fucking puppets. I've been asking everybody for the last hour, I'm getting nothing. But of course, he has to do it in the super offensive Native American pigeon English voice." Ooh, boy! Yeah, he right. also offers to trade the puppets for blankets and a handful of beads. Here, yep, he does. He does. They just man, they were a fucking syphilis blanket away from going all the way, weren't they? Whew. They sure were. Wow. Uh, we also learn his name here. He is Brave Eagle. Yep, is what he is. All right. So in the next scene, they sit around uh, a fire together because that's the next scene. <laughs> the fucking puppets and the kids and the and the old engine feller are sitting around a fire. And this is where we learn that Brave Eagle is literally a mascot. Yep. They made him like he pulls out this can of beans or whatever. And he's like, this is my company. Look, this is me. And he does like the super racist Indian pose thing? Oh, his pose is such a concentration of hate speech. You can make racism lemonade by watching it. <laughs> Just hold a jug of water. Oh, so fucking rough. Yeah, it's, and he gives everybody a, a, an, an Indian name, right? He goes around and he's the you're going to be such and such an eagle. And Gramps, you'll be a tee -hee -hee bald eagle, right? <laughs> but then... Pee Wee asks for a nickname and he's like, oh, fuck, wasn't really thinking of doing this for everyone. <laughs> <sighs> I used up Baldy. I just used up my horse, sure is hungry <laughs> right now. No, what's that? Oh, I'm getting a, a smoke signal. I gotta take this. I gotta take this. <laughs> just, sorry, I should have set that to vibrate. <laughs> so. so he wanders off to go feed his horses. The little girl goes, he's friendly. In a spooky sort of way is the actual line. Yep. Right? I, I guess that's something religious kids had to say a lot back then, but still. <laughs> can't believe they left their fucking movie. And then fucking Pee Wee decides to go through his shit. Yep. Right? He's like, he's out of here, man. Let's let's root through his shit. See if there's some money in here or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange. I love the exchange here. Grandpa's like, okay, don't, you know, don't go through the guy's stuff. You don't trust him. And the kid's like, I mean, I will after I go through his stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> about? But Gramps is like, look, man, if I'm sure if he's got drugs or porn in there, he'll share it with the time is right. And yeah. Pee-wee's like, oh, man, I never get to look through people's fucking sound. Never things. get the first thing. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Porn's going to be all used up. Everyone's going to describe it to me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Gramps is like, moral of the story. The big thing with Christianity is being nice to other races. <laughs> so that's established. I wanted the kid to be like, okay, but what about the part in the Bible here? And scene. Drink your sarsaparilla, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Drink your fucking sarsaparilla. <laughs> Just shoves it in his mouth like a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then we cut to a church. Where they are, they're, okay, all Christian songs are terrifying. If you pay any attention at all, they're talking about, they're singing about being washed in the blood of the lamb. Yeah. And from the sound of this, this tiny cowboy town has a full church choir. That so it does. Yep. yep. That's weird. Also, I just want to point out throughout the course of this scene, the song will continue. And at one point, like someone who is an operatic tenor will take over. So you're listening to like, we be washed in the blood of the lamb. And then people start talking. And about a third of the way through the conversation, you're just going to hear a guy go, I'll be washed in the blood of the lamb. It's so fucking disconcerting. I wanted the camera to pan over and for them to be like, hey, man, we're trying to have a conversation here. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. It's, it's my, my soul. soul. It's, it's, it's <laughs> trying to wash soul ourselves in the blood us. of the lamb. This is distracting to us. <laughs> 
So, yeah, so, okay, so everybody's going to church, including the sheriff is coming with uh, bank robber daddy. That's the Mr. Taggart, Hank. So he's coming along with the, the, the dad, so he'll have a chance to say goodbye to his family b- before they take him off to jail. Right, but he doesn't want to go inside the church. He wants to say goodbye to his family out here. Yeah, he's like, God damn it, we don't have the lighting to do an interior shot at this time of day. <laughs> so I'll meet him out here. And they're they're fine. The cops are like, yeah, no, we'll we'll go get your family. You know, freedom of religion is freedom from religion. I get it. You're an <laughs> so yeah, so they they go in. They get the daughter and the and the wife. And the dad's like, um, he turns to the daughter and he goes like, I gotta go away for a while. And I'm like, oh good, they're not hanging him. I was just pretty sure that's where we were going with this, but no, <laughs> it's jail time. Lucky him. And then they cart him off and the like the daughter and the the wife are like crying and they're wondering what they're gonna the mom is wondering if she's gonna have to move into like prostitution or how she's gonna like make ends meet and everything. And I wrote in my notes, this is a puppet show. It is a strange <laughs> moment to include in their puppet children's television <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> Like, I wanted to be in that writer's room where Steve turned to Frank and he was like, yeah, but I want to watch them, like, weep at their lost innocence, you know? You know, puppet show. Come on, we did your sarsaparilla bit. <laughs> oh, God, this is such a weird fucking scene. And then it closes off, by the way, by uh, zooming in on the church for, like, 73 years, just zooming in on this window that we can't see through. I don't know what they thought they were doing. Well, then the cameraman clearly got distracted by a horse off he to the does. side. Oh, yes. I was yes. just like, oh, just, look at the horse. He's follow- the conversation's still going on. <laughs> All right. So that scene ends. And now we have Pee Wee and Amanda. They're on the porch rocking. Right. Are they like an old couple now? It's what? Very, what? Yeah. That was like, like a really weird version of when Harry met Sally. <laughs> <laughs> we met when we were in a puppet town as children. <laughs> and this is such a weird conversation because she's worried about her dad who we just saw get carted off to prison. And Pee Wee's like, look, you did everything you could. You gave him a Bible. End of list. You did, yeah. you did it all. Right. right. Right, Amanda's like, I've been worrying about my daddy all afternoon. How do I get the fuck over that goddamn shit? It's been bothering me, bugging me back what in my about, mind. I'm going to let the loss of my father ruin my dinner? Absolutely not. <laughs> She's like, but what if? And then Pee Wee cuts it. He goes, he ra- gets raped in the ass. I know. She's like, no, that's not. I wasn't going there. I was, I was going <laughs> to. But like, no, honestly, he cuts her off. She's like, but what if? And he's like, what ifs are stupid. Are they? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just sorry, are you saying questions are stupid? <laughs> and he's like, I think you just proved my point. Questions are stupid, yes. <laughs> We're Christian. Well, he also tells her, he's like, well, we'll just both pray for him. That's the best thing we can do when we're worried about people after all. Is pray for them. Yep. Do you want us to do nothing? Yes, I want you to do nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to be honest. I did not load up the proper emotional palette for this puppet show. <laughs> so while I readjust my expectations, we're going to take a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Amanda's dad be gang raped to death in prison? Will he become a Muslim? Would everyone involved in the production of this film immediately declare the latter a fate worse than the former? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the slapdash conclusion of Ambushed. Okay, and then you lower me on a rope into the safe from above. Yeah, got it. Hey, hey guys, uh, what are you doing? Oh, hey Noah, Heath and I were just planning our next big score. We're going to rob a jewelry store. What, again? Guys, Andrew is going to get so much money already in that antacid lawsuit as it is. All right, well, excuse us, Mr. Uh, Moneybags. Not everybody can afford the crazy markups of most places that sell this stuff. Well, no, that's true, but why don't you just try Majuri? What's What's Majuri? Majuri. Sorry. uh, Are you you, you doing this? Where are you going to go? No, 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 you go. You go. No, no, I insist, please. No. 
No, I think I did the last one. Honestly, it's totally fine. You go. You got uh, uh, Majuri uh, makes Maj- fine jewelry for every day without the ten time markups. Majuri pieces are fairly priced, handcrafted, ethically sourced, and made to last. Sounds good, Noah. But we can't exactly go to a jewelry store right now. No, no, you can't. But that's okay. Right now, you can book a digital one-on-one appointment or live chat with a stylist. Get answers to all your burning questions. What's my size? Gold or silver? What's the best gift? And so much more. I mean, that does seem easier than shimmying through a vent. It definitely is. Mm is head to majuri.com slash awful or use code awful at checkout for 10 percent off your first order that's m-e-j-u-r-i dot com slash awful m-e-j-u-r-i for 10 percent off your first order yeah all right so i'm in let's do majuri instead okay I, like seriously though how were you guys planning to get eli into a vent uh, a lot of butter mm-hmm. uh, i see like a lot, though. A lot. So Got much it. butter. Got it. What's the matter, little Becky? Aw, oh, gee, I'm worried about my pa. Yeah, me too. Now, you kids listen to me. Don't be. Don't, uh, don't be worried about my dad? That's right. In times of trouble, it's best to remember that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Right. Right, but Gramps, you could still believe in Jesus and no, like, no, you, know, you can't. Do, do Everything things. is fine. Damn it, it's fine. Oh, mm, okay. Now, how about you two drink some more sarsaparilla while Grandpa watches? I don't want any. I said I drink. I, 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 okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we're back for more of this shit, and we're going to rejoin the action on the two cops, the sheriff and the deputy, taking Hank, the bank robber daddy, to the prison in Silver City. Yeah. And <laughs> my favorite character in this movie is a, a guy that they apparently pay to just ride with you when you're going to jail on a little cart right next to you and roast you for like 10 yep. hours. <laughs> <laughs> Do his tight 15. I'll bet your gang's going to try to murder you, which, come on, that's pretty funny, right? Come on. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's the deal with jailhouse food? Uh, uh. <laughs> he's got, so he's telling him, like, he's basically, like, three inches from his face going, like, I sure do bet your gang is going to ambush us along the way somewhere and try to kill you for turning into a stool pigeon. That way, the the name ambush would make some amount of sense by the time this was all over. Huh? I bet that's going to happen in three, two, you know, and I, like, but he's saying he's giving him the whole, but you're safe with me speech, which we know means that like, you know, as it happens, like his hat's going to get shot off right when he's done with this. But if his head exploded and his brain sprayed <laughs> all over Hank right in the middle of this speech. I would, you know, with the puppets and everything up till now, like they coax the Christians in and then blow his fucking head off like scanners or something. I would love this goddamn movie. I also would love this movie if just the bad guys hadn't shown up and they're unloading him at a 10 hour ride later and he's just like, <laughs> well, well maybe they'll try to kill you in the prison. I bet they try to kill you in the prison. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to learn some riddles for the next one. I know that's not much of a help to you, but um <laughs> riddles. All right. So uh yeah, but then of course his gang starts firing at him and then Hank and Barty fucking fight fall off the coach for some reason. <laughs> They need to get off the coach, so they run it over the smallest pothole in the world, and they're both like, whoa, move between set pieces, move between set pieces. <laughs> they might as well both start waving their hands in the air and yelling doodly do. <laughs> yeah, so they fucking, they fall out of the goddamn, and apparently the guy who's, uh, who's the deputy who's in charge of the horses just doesn't even notice. He keeps going. So now they gotta get into a a uh, gunfight. And this is my best worst. This is where like one guy's hiding behind a rock, pecu pecuing, but the other guy's also hiding behind a rock, pecu pecuing. Yeah, this is amazing moment where they go, "Give him up, old timer." And I wanted the old guy to be like, "Never. I would rather die than hurt the economy." <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, shit. I feel like the the way that this gunfight <sighs> works is whoever gets the silliest pizzing wins. Right, because you yep. keep going back and forth. That every time the the is a little bit goofier than the last one. When did we learn that guns sound like guns? Because <laughs> they've sounded the same though. Like a gunshot sounds like a gunshot. That wasn't different in the seventies or whenever this was. <laughs> yeah, but okay, but so they're outnumbered and they're firing on Hank and the sheriff. But luckily, just then, the lone stranger shows up. Okay, but like this movie doesn't know how to do westerns, so the lone stranger shows up and then immediately gets shot. Well, right. Okay, so he starts. Great. He starts firing. He also doesn't hit anyone because we can't like shoot people in the face in this fucking movie. So he has the even sillier pazings, I guess. And then they're like, "Oh fuck, we can't compete with those pazings." And and all the bad guys except for one run off. So just as they're like saying, "Thank you, lone stranger. We never could have done it without you." The one bad guy that remained fires and hits the lone stranger and he goes down. Okay, I just want to point out that makes a lot more sense. I must have spaced out during that part of the movie because what I truly remember is this. Lone stranger shows up and is immediately shot in the stomach, <laughs> which was a very different movie viewing experience. Let me tell you. Wait, don't worry. I'm here. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, I'll never poop again. Oh. That's what I thought happened, too. He basically okay. gets shot right away. Oh, yeah, he shows yeah. up. Thank you. And then he gets shot in the dick. Like, right away. <laughs> right away. See, that, that's why you always gird your loins. If you had, like, yeah. a, a dick Bible, that's to lock it, that would have been pretty excellent. Yeah. 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 No, that's exactly what happens. It's just that all of the bad guys leave quickly before that. Yeah. <laughs> just hollowed out in the shape of a dick like a cop. I don't know. <laughs> Now, the lone stranger, he takes a bullet, and it's a bullet that's meant for Hank. So now Hank wants to help. Hank, the atheist bank robber that had no good in him whatsoever, now he wants to help out the lone stranger because he took a bullet for him. Character arc. Nailed it. All right. <laughs> so we cut back to the town. Brave Eagle stereotypes his way in, right? Yep. The kids see him. They're like, Brave Eagle, what's up? He's like, uh, no time for your bullshit. Okay. My friend's hurt. And he runs off. <laughs> yeah. And this is where we get introduced to like the mystery of whether or not this little girl's dad has been shot. That is so okay. This is so fucked up. The puppets and the kids run up and they're like, hey, you know, like Brave Eagle, who's hurt? And he's like, I have no time to talk to you. And he, and he runs in and, and the little girl's like, sees her dad's hat. Right next to the big piles of blood on the on the stagecoach. And she says, hey, did my dad get shot? And he's like, again, no time to clarify. I've got to go inside. Yeah. And again, just to put a, a slightly fine point on it. Look, here's some blood is a line of a puppet in this children's <laughs> entertainment. Gramps the puppet reaches out his felt arm to touch the <laughs> blood he's, from the lone stranger's stomach wound. He's going full CSI on this shit. Wait, was your dad all positive? The blood for a second. His taste is so positive. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, all they know is someone's hurt real bad. They don't bother to tell the little girl it isn't her dad because then where would the suspense come from? And of course, Graham says, she's like, do you think my dad is going to die? And he's like, well, I guess it would be a really good time to assume so and make sure that we're very Christian, huh? <laughs> God, he's doing this. He, he goes up on, a, again, this long armor of God speech or whatever. And the whole time, by the way, the horse that's right next to him is very clearly watching the puppeteer. Right. It really is. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but the horse, horse is very obviously looking at this dude who's hiding below this puppet going like, what the fuck are you doing, man? And it totally <laughs> ruins the shot. It does. It really does. It's fantastic. <laughs> he just kicks the guy. He falls out. Wearing all <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gramps. <laughs> Different guy in all black picks him up, does the Matrix thing, walks him out. Dudley walks over there and goes, is this blood? <laughs> <laughs> is this brain matter? <laughs> All right. And also, by the way, this is a really there's a really creepy conversation going on here because, you know, Graham says like, well, maybe your dad's going to die. Maybe not. Doesn't fucking matter if you're Christian enough. Right. 
To which Dudley says, I'm pretty sure this is a quote. I'm a Christian. I'd willingly march into certain death without fear. Yeah, is the message of the puppet show. I mean, to be fair, I'd willingly march into death without fear is also the message at the end of Toy Story 3, which I thought was strange, (laughs) but it's even weirder. I wasn't expecting it from this one. Well, that was is. The Watch that movie. They all hold hands <laughs> and consign themselves to death. <laughs> what? Trapped inside. Yes. The end of Toy Story 3, when all the main characters are in danger, they hold hands and close eyes and prepare themselves for death. They do. Really? Yeah. I'm not joking. That actually happens. Pretty fucked up. Spoilers. All right. Bosnick hot take. <laughs> And then, uh, so like, but they're all like talking about the armor of God. And then Amanda turns to Gramps and she says, but what if my dad dies and burns in hell? End of scene. Yeah. I laughed really hard. (laughs) Where she's like, but what if my daddy isn't saved? Hard cut. (laughs) Well, right. But that's the thing. That's what the movie wants. The movie wants you, the child watching this to think, wow, he's going to wound up. Oh, no. You know, right. That's the emotion they're going for. The letter H might as well have risen up next to the girl and been like, I'm on today's letter. H for hell. Burning (laughs) in fire forever. Can you say lake of fire? (laughs) So meanwhile, we cut back inside. The doctor has done all he can for the lone stranger. The rest is up to God. (laughs) And we cut into the puppets outside. And the puppet's like, the only choice we have is to pray for her. And the puppet says, this is what Gramps says, God, we know you love Amanda's dad even more than she does. And I just wrote in my notes, weird, weird flex. Yeah, <laughs> weird flex in your prayer. <laughs> if you think about it, Amanda doesn't even really like her dad that much. <laughs> but you do. And then he does this whole Jesus thing at the end. He's like, Oh, also help him or heal him or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, whoever's blood that is, let's make sure they're okay too. Well, I love he's like, we should pray for the pray for your dad. And Pee Wee's like, Gramps, can you pray out loud? Because you know, otherwise this is just us looking down for like a minute and a half on camera. He's like, oh right, right, yes, that's that's going to help. So he, again, the fucking armor guy. He's like, dear God, please let us use the sword of righteousness to defeat the. Badass monster of doubt and grant us the laser pistols of temperance as we face the <laughs> monster trucks of nunchucks. <laughs> well, so there's a guy dressed in all black hiding right under me. Let's pray nobody notices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's pray this Let's horse looks over to the goddamn left. A horse. <laughs> someone please. Again. Someone please misdirect this horse. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, now Hank, we cut back to the, the where the lone stranger is in, inside where the doctor's done working on him. Hank sure is worried about him. He's like, why would the lone stranger be willing to die for me? And Brave Eagle says, because you are not yet Christian enough to die. And he is, except in a racist I- Indian voice. Actually. Yeah. The only thing more offensive than the Jesus pitch is the Jesus pitch in racist half pigeon speak. Oh, God. Yeah, the, and, and, well, he turns to him and he goes like, you know, Taggart, this isn't the first, and I'm not going to do the goddamn voice he does or anything, these aren't the exact words or anything, but he's like, Taggart, you know, this isn't the first time someone took a bullet for you. Huh? 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 Who, who else can we think of that maybe died for you, huh? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Jesus, I mean, Jesus' dad basically shot his son in the dick for you. <laughs> like, that's what happened. <laughs> And then that. fucking Brave Eagle whips out a Bible from the fucking holster on his hip. Yep. I have here, let me grab this Bible I always have with me up my ass, apparently. Yeah, and I'll swish right off. Well, let me open it real quick to Romans. Again, I love this so much. If you know the Bible, it's so much fun to watch the Christian movies. Like anytime they open the Bible, it's always to like the last eleven pages or something. Well, not the last eleven, by the way. It's, it's, sorry, it's, it's, it's before the last eleven, but after the first seven hundred and ninety or All something. All right, Jewish, 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 <laughs> Jewish, no lies, lies, lies. Romans, there we go. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Here's stuff that isn't 
disproven yet, kind of, because it, it's vague enough. Well, yeah, right. Let me read you individual sentences from Romans 10, then <laughs> 9, then 13, right? Because that's what you have to do to assemble something meaningful from this fucking book. This is also where dad prays and he goes, look, God, this isn't going to be pretty, but and then Jesus, Jesus. But I really wanted him to be like, all right, God, this isn't going to be pretty, but give me that sweet, sweet salvation pussy. Lord. <laughs> Lower your labia of salvation and forgiveness onto my waiting nose crest of soul. Jesus Christ. Sorry, I'm not a Christian. I don't, that, <laughs> I don't know the word. Is that good? Did God like that? <laughs> Let me lick the peanut butter of forgiveness out of your butthole. <laughs> All right. And so we come back outside. And just as Pee Wee's like, you know, fuck this noise. I'm going in guns blazing. Brave Eagle pops out and he tells Amanda to come on in. He's like, Amanda, come on in. She goes, is, is daddy OK? And he goes, you just come. Yeah. I feel like the answer is yes, you prick. Feels like a weird time for a surprise. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So she runs in. She gives daddy a big old hug. And he's like, she's like, oh, wow, you weren't even shot. I guess they could have just told me you were fine right away. No real reason to make me wait at all, huh? <laughs> and the dad's like, I'm not just okay. And she's like, you're saved. And he's like, oh, yep. Yes. Kind of ruined my surprise. <laughs> I had sort of a, but, yeah, no, I am. I am. I hate you. I hate you with the pie and the Bible. I fucking hate you. <laughs> so, yeah. So and then Brave Eagle is it goes back to see who we can only assume to be his gay lover, the lone stranger. Very clear. The doctor's like, you can see him now. <laughs> yeah. And then Brave Eagle has to go outside and give his very special feather to Pee Wee. Yeah, this metaphor was weird, right? He was like, because it was racist nonsense, but it was also like weirdly pedophiliac nonsense. He was and like, also oh. it was like weirdly like hippie spiritual in the middle of this Christian thing, too. Yes. Brave Eagle has waited many days to find the right boy to give his spear to. A boy that can <laughs> oh, keep God. secrets. Are you a good secret keeper, Pee Wee? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> And by the way, Pee Wee through this entire thing is inexplicably pissy, right? He goes really full bitchy, Alma yeah. the entire time. He's like, I bet eagles don't even have to wear glasses on me. <laughs> Sucks. Sucks to be me. I, I'm writing in my notes. Did they forget there were puppets in this? <laughs> oh, and then also, then all of a sudden, kind of out of nowhere, Gramps cuts in to do a wrap up like they just realized there were only 90 seconds left. Yes, it's, I love the race metaphor. Like they start a metaphor and then realize they don't have one. It goes, life's like a race, Dudley. You put all your stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the opening is so fucking weird, too. Gramps is like, and I then realized that all the people in the city of armor were already Christian, which... I mean, it's America in the mid 1800s. I probably should have just assumed that. I guess I could have don't really it up, know why but, I thought they uh, weren't Christian. It's pretty weird of me, actually. So I left. And then we get like the breakfast club clothes. That's right. Dad goes to prison, but, you know, Christian prison. So it's better. Yeah, Christian. <laughs> Christian. The lone stranger is OK. He's fine. Don't worry about him. It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> And then in their, oh, 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 and then we learn what was in those saddlebags that Pee Wee wanted to peek in. Turns out, yeah, they were engine Bibles <laughs> in engine language. In engine language. Jesus. I wanted so badly for the kid to be like, sorry, real quick, what language is that? Because there's like several hundred tribes across the West that it just, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the tannest guy we could find. <laughs> And then, like, in their desperate effort to try to, like, I don't know, profound it up at, a little bit at the end, Dudley turns to Gramps and goes, it's good to be alive, Gramps. Like, the best they could close on was, like, one puppet observing that not being dead is the preferable state of existence. <laughs> yep. It's closest to morality we get from this movie. <laughs> I guess, or maybe they wanted to push back because they realized at the end of it, oh, you know, this is going to encourage kids to commit suicide to get to heaven. We should probably point out that being alive is good, too. There. Uh, solved it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, clearly, 
this will not be the last we see of Dudley Dumpling, Gramps, and Philemon, the Nazi dog. So, damn right. What historical era are you hoping they drop in on next? Mm, the Big Bang. <laughs> oh, you sure? <laughs> yeah. They, they can like, convert oh. some stardust. <laughs> All right. Man, this uh, fucks huh. up our whole thing. <laughs> yes. Can we... We'll just put, some, well, put them in a note in the margin. It uh, might all be wrong. Okay. Uh, and I was going to go with Waco. The Waco, Texas Oh, nice. Standoff. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> that needed puppets. I have been saying that for years. <laughs> There's children in there, Dudley. There's children oh, in there. God. Branch Davidians, the puppet musical needs yes. to exist. Yes. All right, Patreon. Patreon.com. Oh. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for our review of Ambush, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still haven't reached our limit, apparently. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? The Adventures of Chris Fable. This is one of our most requested movies, and we're finally getting around to it. Okay, good. Well, we know when the recommendations start coming in, it's because the movies are very good and enjoyable. So, <laughs> with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 242 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of People Dress on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Club. This movie got sued by Jim Henson for pseudo-intellectual property rights <laughs> violation. All the non-puppet characters went on to die of cholera or dysentery or something. Eli went on to be killed by extremely long puppet legs every night in his dreams for the rest of his life. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.